What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be going over my experience with some helmets that were sent to me from a company called Ballistic Armor Co., which led me to uncovering a Chinese helmet conspiracy. Not really a conspiracy, but more like uh, dudes just being dumbasses and uh, lying to their customers. So Ballistic Armico hit me up a while back uh, to do a review on their new Gen 2 helmets, where initially I was uninterested in doing this because I didn't want to do a review on what I assumed was a Chinese helmet because it's just been done a ton on YouTube. I didn't really want it on my channel, but they hit me back up and said that no, that these things were actually made in Denmark. and. When I looked on their website, it said, you know, made in Denmark at the bottom. So I took their word for it. You know, why would they lie about that? Uh, they have, you know, seemed like a reputable company. So, you know, I said, yeah, sure, you have my interest. I've uh, never really heard of, you know, these helmets that were made in Denmark. And I haven't really seen it really tested that much on YouTube. So I had them send me a couple. They sent me actually two. This one you see here on my head, this tan one, and this green one right here. One for ballistic testing and one for, you know, wearing out here at the range and at Milsom West and such. So I've actually worn both of these helmets at multiple Milsom West. I see a lot on my channel. I think that those events are the best way for a civilian to get out there and test your gear out. And I really wanted to see like how these helmets felt over prolonged periods of time. I have a total of like 200 hours of these, these things. I wore this for two events before doing the ballistic testing on it um, and this for three. And the ballistic testing, when I did on this, is when I started to kind of uncover this whole shit show. But no, before we get into this whole fiasco and what led to it, a word from our sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Shields. You've probably heard of them. They are a sporting goods store, and they are the place to go to outfit you for any of your outdoor adventure needs. They carry a lot of the top brands on the market like Sitka, Mystery Ranch, Leupold, and more, so you don't get caught lacking in the great outdoors. Go to one of their many locations across the United States, or you know, just go to their website because they got a bunch of cool deals on there. So. Go check out Shields, and big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. Also make sure to check out Slate Black Industries. Use code BJO10 for 10% off some sick M-Lock grips and accessories. So before we get into the fun part of this video, um, how are the helmets themselves? Well, like I said before, I have worn these helmets for quite a while, have about 200 hours under these things at these Milsom West events, plus, you know, stuff out here at the range. But, you know, the helmets themselves are comfortable, um, very similar to an Opscore, a little bit heavier than some of the lighter Opscore options out there. But, you know, as far as the comfort goes, uh, very comfortable helmet, especially because of the padding that they come with. Uh, this is very comfortable padding. Uh, the one thing I say about it is it does soak up water uh, quite a bit, um, and it might be a problem, if it's, especially if it's cold out. Even if it's cold out and you're actually out there uh, getting after it, you're still going to sweat, and when you take this helmet off and then you put it back on, it's going to freeze you to death. But you know, maybe if it's a hotter climate, um, it's actually kind of nice because it kind of keeps your head cool. But you know, that is a issue that's common a lot amongst a lot of other helmet pads out there. Um, even the Opscore ones, maybe not as bad as these, but they are very comfortable, I'll say that. As far as the suspension system goes, um, it does all right. It's pretty good, you know, especially for the price of these helmets. It's not as good, obviously, as like a Team Wendy or an Opscore, I think, but the BOA back here, does its job perfectly fine. I haven't had any issues with it. The only thing about this thing is like this material on the back here, this like faux like leather. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like what a glasses case would be made out of, but you know, not really that bad. And you know, I've obviously worn this to uh, mount my nods. I haven't had any issues there. So after I got done using this helmet at multiple, you know, 40 hour events and stuff out here at the range, I decided to ballistically test it. And I did this in a video prior, um, which I actually filmed an entire video on these helmets, which no one will ever see because in the process of making that video, I uncovered the uh, actual truth behind these helmets which lies in the Kevlar you see back here. But as far as the blissing testing goes, um, it actually kind of surprised me. Let's take a look. All right, so for this first test, we're gonna be shooting the front of the helmet with the Beretta. So again, we're gonna be using 124 grain, nine millimeter ammunition from Nautilus Ammo. So see how it does. Hopefully I don't hit the night vision bracket holes right there because I am kind of a Shitty shot. All right, 
let's see how it did. All right, so from an <laughs> kind of an impressive feat on my part, you can see this tiny little hole right here. That's where I hit it, right between the, <laughs> the three uh, night vision bracket mounts. And as far as the backside of it, um, just a slight indentation. You would survive that, especially with the padding that's on the inside of there, which I took out just so you could see the bulge better. But you know, held up to nine millimeter, uh, which it's supposed to be rated for pretty good. So let's see how it does with the, uh, the shotgun. We're gonna shoot the shotgun here at the back. So we just shot it with the nine millimeter, held up pretty good. Now we're gonna see what this thing's really mad of. We're gonna shoot it with this old Mossberg 500, which I just recently picked up from a local gun store. And uh, we're gonna be shooting it with this kind of cheapo double op buck. Um, you know, it is what it is. I kind of wanted to shoot it with more high powered stuff, but this is what I had on hand, so. Let's see what it does. In three, two, one. Woo! I don't know. Ah! That looks worse, definitely worse than the, uh, than the. Those are just, those are pretty piece of the dummy, but, uh, as you can see in the back here, a um, little bit of a bulge in there. I think you would still survive that. Um, I'm not a helmet expert, guys, but nothing went through. Obviously, it was just double op buck. Um, but yeah, held up good. I think if you got shot, unfortunately, in the back of the head by a uh, uh, double op buck uh, out of a shotgun, you'd probably be okay with this helmet on. Uh, I might have a little bit of a headache, but with the padding and everything else in there, um, that bulge would. I don't think that would kill you. All right, so held up to the nine millimeter, held up to the shotgun. Now uh, let's finish this bad boy off. I have no hopes that this thing is actually going to survive this, but we'll see what happens. So it looks like I shot it right here. And yeah, I went right through. Ah. Wait a second. You can feel, you can hear all the things in there, but. Uh, that's weird. I, th I, I think that went through. Let's shoot it one more time. I don't know about that. All right, so that first hit with the 545 was a little sus. Uh, I saw the, like, the back face deformation on that thing and I didn't see like um, an exit wound or an exit hole so uh, we're gonna shoot it again see if it does the same thing and maybe it's more telling of what this thing does when it comes to hits a rifle so one two three all right give it to me uh, it looks like it went through and I don't know, it did some weird shit where it came out the top here, it looks like. So, in the end of the day, um, maybe with enough distance, um, just like any ballistic helmet, things do happen. There are recorded cases of, you know, these helmets stopping rifle rounds where they kind of like wrap around or the head or whatever else. But, um, you know, <laughs> definitely do not want to get shot in the head while with a rifle uh, while wearing one of these helmets because it's not rated for it. Didn't expect it to stop it. But that first round that hit was a little weird. Um, it's right here. Um, I could feel something in there so I'm not sure if it stopped it or not maybe because it hit the the arc rail beforehand I'm not sure I'm not a ballistics expert but you know for what this thing is rated for I do believe these to be pretty okay so as you can see in that footage the helmet actually did all right the helmet will stop um, what most military helmets are meant to do you know fragmentation but you know it did stop the 124 grain nine millimeter perfectly fine as you can see here on the back face deformation you would survive that uh, especially with the padding in there and then it took a you know double op buck from near point blank right on the back of the head here again stop that which you know these helmets should stop nine millimeter and double op buck uh, but you know there was no serious back face deformation uh, on the side here is where i shot it with the 545 initially 
and I kind of had to, um, you know, rewind the footage and actually dig into the Kevlar on this thing to see what actually happened. I, when I first saw it, I thought it actually caught the 545 round when it went through the arc rail here. Um, but, you know, after talking to some people and actually digging into the Kevlar, I think that that little bulge on the back, it kind of sealed back in on itself and stuff actually did go through. I don't think that this helmet um, stopped that round completely. I was digging out jacket um, from inside the Kevlar here. And, you know, I do think that you would have died from that. And obviously when I shot it again with a 545, it went clean through. But, you know, what round I did not test on this thing, and I'm actually kind of interested to see, you know, what will happen is 7.62x39. So we're going to do that right now. All right, so we're going to shoot this thing uh, with 7.62x39 out of this AK-103. I'm going to shoot it here on the side, which has been relatively unaffected by the past rounds that I shot out with. So you know, we'll see how it happens. I don't think it's going to pass or you know, stop the round, but we shall see. All right, 7.62 by 39 in three, two, one. Yeah, it didn't stop it at all. I kind of caught it there at the bottom, but uh, there's really no hope for it for stopping these rifle rounds. Uh, not that it should. It's, this, is not thing is, this thing is not meant to stop rifle rounds from this close. So yeah, pointless test, but whatever. <laughs> Look at the back there. <laughs> that round went through right here and out the other side and blew out this way. Uh, no fucking chance in hell. <laughs> so as you can see in that completely pointless uh, test, it did not stop the 7.62 x 39. No, uh, not that it should have. You know, I was just kind of curious in what would happen. But this helmet did stop uh, the other rounds that it should have stopped, you know, in the previous test that I did. And this is kind of where I ran into some of the issues when it came to this helmet and when I started to uncover things that I was not expecting to uncover. So when I posted some pictures of, you know, the helmet and how it did on Instagram, I got hit up by my buddy Oxide, uh, you know, about the helmet. And he claimed that this thing looked like it was Chinese. So after he made this claim towards me, uh, initially I was like, no bro, this thing is made in Denmark. It says made in Denmark on their website. And he's like, no, that Kevlar, that this orange slash yellow Kevlar looks very similar, if not the same, as some of the Chinese helmets that he's tested. If there's anybody that I'm gonna trust when it comes to helmets and the testing of them, it's Oxide. He has a ton of different videos of him testing a wide variety of helmets. So, you know, I believed him and I started digging into it more. This is when I uncovered and started to unravel um, just the web of lies um, that this company is putting out. So on their website, it says made in Denmark. And if you do any research at all when it comes to helmets, in Denmark, you can probably, um, you know, figure out where these helmets are coming from. So that company in Denmark asked to remain anonymous, which I'm going to respect because honestly, this whole debacle isn't really their fault. But when I asked them about it, their main response was, our helmets aren't even made in Denmark. Uh, their helmets are actually made elsewhere in Europe, and they also have a second line of helmets which come from China. These helmets are for people who don't want to pay the extra price for their nicer European helmets. And, you know, they then purchase those helmets from Chinese vendors and then run them through their QC process and then send them to whoever's purchasing them. So this is when I started to kind of put the two and two together and figure out what was going on. Ballistic Armico was purchasing these helmets from this Denmark company and then putting on their website that these things are made in Denmark, even though they were buying the Chinese helmets that the Denmark company was buying and then distributing them to them. So just because it came from Denmark, they're putting made in Denmark on their website, even now, even if they were buying the European helmets, um, it still would have been, <laughs> wouldn't have been made in Denmark. It's just a complete, uh, you know, where do the lies end, <laughs> you know? So after figuring out all this information, I hit up Ballistic Armor Co, laid it out to them, and they acted completely surprised. They acted like they had no idea, you know, that their helmets were being sourced from China, that their helmets weren't even made in Denmark. I mean, if you do any research at all, and even ask the company that you're uh, getting them from, they, they're completely open about it. And it was just kind of, you know, confusing to me. Like, how the hell would it take, how, how did it take me 
and Oxide to figure out this whole debacle, and the owner of the company didn't even know. Their main excuse was that the company, or Ballistic Armor Co., is under new ownership, and he's kind of trying to pick up the pieces, and that he's thankful for knowing this, but um, it's kind of a big deal to me just because, you know, I used to wear a helmet and carry a rifle for a living in combat zones, and I feel like those people deserve to know exactly where their helmets came from. So the helmets themselves are fine, I'd say. You know, if you have one of these things, it will stop the things that it's advertised and stopping. Uh, my biggest problem with it is the marketing and the straight up lies involved with it. You know, even if these were like the legit helmets um, from that Denmark company, um, they still wouldn't have been made in Denmark. And on the website to this day, it still says made in Denmark at the bottom. And that is something I have a huge problem, you know, problem with. And it's very common amongst the armor and like the helmet industry. And you know, it's kind of sickening to me. You know, these things are meant to save, you know, war fighters uh, potentially. And again, those people deserve to know exactly where that armor is coming from. Even if it is like going to protect them, they deserve to know that. And, you know, the lying involved is a problem. And they said that they're going to fix this and that they're like, you know, going to try and make um, their own version, USA made version of a ballistic helmet. We'll see if that actually happens. I kind of call bullshit. I've heard that same thing from many other, you know, helmet manufacturers or helmet companies based here in the United States, uh, you know, like hardhead veterans or whatever. I've yet to see it. Um, I think that they're still going to peddle these things or maybe at least change the website so it doesn't say made in Denmark. I mean, I figured it out. Like <laughs> the fact that it took two YouTubers to figure out like the bullshit that you're up to, um, I don't know, it's kind of ridiculous to me, but hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Gene Operator or go to my website, thebluegeneoperator.com to find some cool shirts and merch, which helps to support the channel. Also guys, if you want to support me, you know, even further, uh, Patreon, it's a great way to support the channel directly. If you know, you know, YouTube generally hates gun tubers, especially now with all these new rules coming out. But you know, I got a couple of different levels on there, one of which gets you into my secret Discord chat. But you know, hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll see you guys next time.